Happy Ash Wednesday. Well, that's not a saying we really hear often, is it? For Ash Wednesday isn't a time of happiness and celebration. It's not the joy of Christmas, which was just a few months ago. Nor is it the triumphal sound of Palm Sunday or Easter, which are to come at the end of the journey that begins today. No, today's often a softer tone, a humbling time, a quieter time, as we start the Lenten journey. Ash Wednesday is a time where we remember our mortality. From dust you were created, and to dust you shall return. Recalling the words said to Adam and Eve as they were sent from the garden in Genesis. In other parts of scripture, the Hebrew term for dust is translated as ashes. In scripture, we find ashes present in the ritual sacrifices done to seek forgiveness and reconciliation with God. This too is what we seek on Ash Wednesday. We come acknowledging and repenting of our sins we seek for God to create in us a clean heart. We're often told to repent and believe the gospel, echoing the messages of John the Baptist and Jesus. And on the surface, neither of these things is really all that uplifting. It's generally not the most joyful conversation when we talk about our own mortality when we earnestly seek to repent of our sins and be reconciled and forgiven. It's a sobering and humbling moment, but not often a joyful one. That said, we can come to see that both of these things have been transformed. Some might even say triumphed in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ, which we arrive at at the end of the season which starts today. Today is the start of the season of Lent. It is a season in the life of the church where we follow Christ through the desert place to a triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem, a last meal, a prayer, a trial, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. It's not just about today and then picking up the story again on Palm Sunday and then after that on Easter, but it is about the entire journey that unfolds. For centuries, the season of Lent has been seen as a time of repentance a time of preparing candidates for baptism and to join in the church. And as a time of calling people to observe spiritual disciplines, often referred to as Lenten disciplines in this season. It's this last part that I want to reflect upon some this Ash Wednesday. One of our lectionary texts that's assigned for Ash Wednesday comes as excerpts from chapter six of the Gospel of Matthew. These verses come from the Sermon on the Mount, a sermon series by Jesus, if you will. Jesus talks about almsgiving, about prayer and fasting, which are often disciplines people choose to observe or to participate in or turn to in during this season. Almsgiving is another way of saying giving to the poor. In this pandemic time where we continue to find ourselves, there may be a greater need now more than ever. And perhaps there's also more of an awareness of that need within our community and not just some far off place. People and agencies who seek to meet the needs of those who are hungry, of those who need shelter, of those in need of clothing, 
of those in need of whatever it may be, have had to vamp and revamp plans in ways they meet and journey alongside people in need. And so have we. Now, almsgiving may already be a spiritual discipline that you practice. In fact, Jesus is actually talking about those who practice almsgiving in the text. He's offering a warning, though. Jesus says we shouldn't make a big scene about what we're doing for others when we're being generous toward and walking alongside those in need. We shouldn't blow trumpets on our way to wherever we're headed to serve and to do. We shouldn't draw attention to ourselves as we might be pushing out that overflowing cart of groceries from the grocery store to give to those who are hungry. We shouldn't be heaving and sighing as we're hauling bags of donations of clothes for those in need of clothing. For that matter, we shouldn't boast about that one pair of gloves or that one can of soup. That might be all we're able to do in this season. We shouldn't flaunt our checks or even our two cents that we bring in an offering for the poor and those who are in need. Rather, put it in the collection box, hand it off to someone, Just put it in the food pantry or wherever you're donating and do it quietly. Do it in secret for your father who sees in secret will reward you. And with regard to prayer, don't stand in the middle of the crowd and start yelling in prayer to God. Don't draw attention to yourself as you start to pray. Rather, go into a quiet space and pray to your Father in secret, for your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, many of you know that I had the opportunity to go to the Holy Land a few years ago now. And one of the places that we went was on the Mount of Olives, just outside of Jerusalem. It was a cave-like home where it is believed that Jesus shared these words about prayer. This place is humble and quiet in the midst of everything that has grown up around it. It is in this space we believe that Jesus instructs the people about how to pray, where to pray, and praying to our Father who sees us in secret. He offers to them and to us what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. In fact, if you were to visit this place, you would see over 150 different ceramic tiles that beautifully share the words of the Lord's Prayer in different languages all throughout the gardens in the place where it's believed that Jesus taught us and shared with us how to pray. Prayer may be your greatest spiritual discipline, or it may be your greatest spiritual weakness, or you may find yourself anywhere between those two extremes. But wherever you are with regard to prayer, as a Lenten discipline, as a spiritual discipline, remember these words of Christ as you engage in your prayers. The final, final, rather, Lenten discipline that Christ talks about in this passage is fasting. Don't go around sharing with everybody how hungry you are. Don't disfigure your face. Don't make it known what you are doing. Rather, Christ tells us to put oil on our heads than to wash our face. For your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. In today's world, it's not just about fasting from food. We often look to fast from those things that deter us from a right and good relationship with Christ. It might be drinking, it might be cussing, and it might be social media. 
Regardless, though, of how you choose to fast, or if you choose to fast, don't make the big production out of it. Rather, do it quietly. Jesus repeats over and over and over again in these texts to not be like the hypocrites who give to the poor, who pray and fast to receive honor and glory and devotion for themselves. No. Do these things in secret and in honor and in devotion and to the glory of God. Do these things in an honest effort to not show others who you are, but to grow closer to the other whose you are. For the reward we will receive from God is much greater than any accolades or praise that we will ever receive from another human being. Now, almsgiving, prayer, and fasting are just a few spiritual and Lenten disciplines that you might consider or reconsider as this season begins. You know, I referenced the lectionary text earlier. Did you know that there's actually a lectionary text assigned for every day? It's not just Sundays and the big holidays and the big holy days of the Christian calendar, but every single day. And I want to offer and extend an invitation to you to join Pastor Lori on Thursdays via Zoom, where she's going to have some just discussion about the text for that day during this season. Engaging in the reading and reflection upon scripture is a Lenten discipline. Other Lenten and spiritual disciplines you may consider are a new devotion book that guides you in your time with God. Creating a list of people with whom you need to be reconciled and then praying for those people and how God might work in this time. Finding a time of Sabbath, of rest, for rest and Sabbath are holy. Writing a letter of affirmation to someone or thanking them, random acts of kindness, safely volunteering with an organization that helps those who are in need. Revisit the book of Acts and see what the first church was truly all about. Whatever it is that you might choose to do in this Lenten season, I pray that it is a holy, humbling, impactful journey that draws you closer to the one who took on flesh, dwelled among us, and offers us the incredible gift of grace and life that takes and transforms us beyond our mortal and sinful nature. The invitation to a Lenten discipline is an invitation to strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ. So today, there will be an opportunity for you to come to the church for ashes to be imposed on your forehead in the sign of a cross. We've set aside a time at noon and at seven for you to drive through the portico outside the offices for ashes to go, as I've heard people call them before. Those imposing ashes and those who come to receive are asked to wear masks. But whether or not you're able to come for this imposition of the ashes, I want us to remember that the ashes we receive were made from the burning of palm branches, much like what was used to celebrate that triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The ashes for us are a sign that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. They are a visible sign of our need to repent and believe the gospel. They are a reminder about the journey that begins today. So how will you spend this 40-day season? How will you spend your days before returning to dust? 
Will you spend your time boasting about your religious ways, seeking the praise of others? Or will you be mindful that the God who sees you in secret will see you in the quiet, still ways in which you are doing? Will you spend your time praising and honoring God, seeking God in all that you do? I've said this before, but I will say it again. Today is the start of a season that is 40 days on the Christian calendar, and it can last for an eternity if we start making it less and less about us and more and more about God. Amen.